Uh, as I've repeated about three times already this morning, the Climate Council has predicted the state of WA needs to double its stocks of professional fireys in the next 15 years. In light of the recent bushfires in both Yarloop and Esperance, how do firefighters feel about this rather startling forecast? Dave Gossage is the State Vice President of the Association of Volunteer Bush Fire Brigades of WA and he joins me now. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Beck. Thanks for your time. No worries. What was, what's your take on the Climate Council report? Do you think climate change is something that needs to be taken into consideration when you're planning for the future? Look, absolutely. I think it's a given, even though Mother Nature has some unique cycles and gives us <laughs> also in the last decade some very extremes in fire weather and um, even you know storm cyclones, etc. It's just been amazing what's been happening. But um, certainly, I, I suppose I've got a little bit of a red flag there with the, with the, the use of the word professional um, uh, in in the in the uh, way that the reports reflected that. I think the the correct wording that they should have used um, should be one of um, you know firefighters uh, for the country regions and the bushfire areas. Not uh, that that term will be deliberately misused by the city people to put mob arms on seats, which is not what we need across rural and western Australia. We need more bushfire professionals, if they want to call it that. But um, you could say we need more career um, people supporting the local volunteers, local communities, building community resilience, and making sure that um, we uh, all have ownership of of the land that we live and care for so, overall. Uh, so in your mind, Dave, you think it needs to be more of these volunteer guys who, who spend their lives dedicated out in the regions to helping fight fires as opposed to looking at more, as you mentioned, their, their use of the word professional firefighters? Yeah. I, I think they've missed the point in that space. What, what, well, I think it's more uh, relevant with this topic to say we need more capacity. So... A uh, big issue we've got is if we could get the uh, emergency services levy taken away from the line who's in charge of the meat chest and um, have a separate board that would actually look at the risk across WA and proportionately distribute the funds into uh, higher risk areas and provide resources to local governments down at the ground level to work with their communities, to work with their volunteers, to manage the bushfire threat. Uh, more equitably uh, is a better way to go and so I'm still a bit sceptical about this report and and the use of that word professional I think they may have been influenced by some uh, national bodies in that regard because I think they were missing the point about building resilience capacity and capability of, of communities at the grass le level who would be affected by the effects of climate change and I think that's more important here for those people who have been on the ground level, in, in terms of the report, just talking about additional numbers, I suppose, needed to be helping fighting fires in the next 15 or so years. In the recent bushfires in Yarloop and the Esperance region, did, did were services stretched? I mean, were guys really under the pump? Are you already seeing the need for more numbers? Yeah, look, um, that's a reality, but... Um, I've also noticed there's been a decline in uh, volunteer numbers over the years and nobody's wanting to address what's causing that. And if we um, took into consideration what are the triggers of our resources getting thinner and focused on that rather than building um, empires, um, it would actually help uh, re-establish the numbers we need within within the communities to be more sustainable for longer periods of time. What, what do you... Yeah. Sorry, what do you think is causing that decline? Um, red tape, bureaucracy, um, pol state policy, procedures that are just going... They're so city-centric, they've lost connection with the, the greater state of WA and, and the, the word community... Uh, I think they, that's a, a dirty word because they just don't understand community or volunteerism in communities. And, and we need to get that message back onto the table that their, their state policies need to change to build community resilience, to re-empower the communities 
um, and just listening to and talking with a number of farmers who and fire, volunteer firefighters through the Esperant region, myself, over re- recent weeks, the common theme coming out of that is this centralised bureaucracy approach to the state is disempowering and creating this fear perception amongst communities that they can't react quickly enough to deal with fires because they're worried about somebody coming down and paying them a visit. And uh, and that's, that's, a, that's a fear culture, and we've got to get rid of that fear culture and, and rebuild the empowerment. I'm, I'm in control of my community. I have ownership of my community. I have ownership of the risks. I want to be empowered. I want to. T- I can actually make a real difference here. And there's a lovely, gen- genuine country farmers out there, like in the Esperance region, who had very good plans of how they wanted to manage this risk. But it seems the the bureaucracy and red tape of the city is preventing them from being able to be um, safe, in a sense. So it comes back to state policy and and the bureaucratic approach and ticking the boxes is something that's got to stop and they've got to start listening to the community. And the only way you're going to do that is by putting, redirecting the funding and the resources back at the local level for the local government so they can have local people dealing with local issues and building that community resilience back up. And then over time, you'll get your numbers automatically coming up anyway. My guest this morning is Dave Gossage. He's the State Vice President of the Association of Volunteer Bushfire Brigades of WA. Dave, you mentioned there, you make a good point about the fear culture and and, and changing that to give pe- local people on the ground more ownership. I mean, how do you really do that? Does it just come down to state government policy changes, really? Yeah, I mean, the, you need to... It, it goes through all tiers of, of, of government and policy um, setters, um, mindsets need to change and make sure that uh, state policies are written in a way that says uh, we will empower the communities to, to take on these roles, these functions, this, and we will support the local communities by allowing them, for instance, in the bushfire risk mitigation space, um, you know, where the amount of money that comes um, out of that to us back out on the ground compared to what goes into the city, there's a huge paradigm difference. I know, and the and the, and the city unions will kick up about it, but the reality is I know there's higher risk in the city of Perth, but um, the reality is there's been more losses through the bushfires in, in history than, than city fires. So we need to um, redirect some of the funding more equitably. And, and what amazes me is the ESL went up this year by I think it was around about 10.6%, but we never saw 10.6% being increased out to the people on the ground in the community, uh, and there's definitely, we can't use any of that money for mitigation, and this is why the rules need to change and the line needs to be taken away from the meat chest, and then we need to re-empower uh, the communities to have more of a say of how that money is, is uh, distributed, and frankly, it's, it's not, not hitting the mark at the moment. So we need to do a whole heap of statewide policy changes, work with local government, because they seem to at times state government ignore local government. They need to listen to local government. They need to listen to the volunteer bush fire brigades, the farmers, the communities. And that's um, over over the last decade or so, and especially in the last four years in our space, it's become a very top-down, dictatorial-type approach to decision-making, and it seems to be more of a a rank-based culture rather than a community-up um, culture that's been uh, forced upon us. And we need to turn that around. Are, are these the sort of things that you're preparing a report for the bushfire inquiry? Are these the sort of things that you'll be putting into that inquiry? Oh, absolutely. Um, the, the membership across WA, uh, in their words, I keep hearing, we've had enough, we've had a guts for us uh, since we lost the bushfires board. It's progressively gone downhill, and in the last four years, it's rapidly fallen off the cliff, and we need to turn that around. We've had enough. We hate this uh, city-centric mentality that's being forced upon us. We need local people in touch with local communities um, looking after our communities and our risks that are suiting our community as such. So um, I think that's having a huge bearing on uh, the volunteer numbers for sure. Um, There's no question about that. 
Uh, best of luck with the bushfire inquiry report and um, we'll follow it closely as it goes along, Dave. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Yeah, and, I, and I'm certainly making sure the voice of the volunteers in the Esperance region is heard, so we'd love to hear from any volunteers in that area at any stage. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Dave. That's Dave Gossage there. He is the State Vice President of the Association of Volunteer Bush Fire Brigades, making some interesting points there about the need to, to decentralise that bush fire, the local bush fire brigades, get away from the city-centric model and get more to on-the-ground local involvement. What do you think? One three hundred five two five triple two, or send me a text zero double four eight nine double two six.